Ted's been one of the three people chosen to have a secondary surgery injection of stem cells. And uh, he's part of a major clinical trial. And it's been a total advocate for our business for a number of years. And I welcome him to the podium. Thanks, Ted. Thank you. I appreciate the invitation today. I appreciate the opportunity to address everyone here. As I look around the room and I look on the agenda, I see a lot of PhDs and MDs and COOs and CEOs. The only thing you'll find behind my name are three letters that say ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. In 2010, I was given this diagnosis and I was told nothing can be done. I sat across from a world-renowned neurologist who looked at me and said, Ted, there's nothing you did to get this, nothing you could have done to avoid getting this, and I'm sorry I don't have a cure. Well, that wasn't good enough for me. And unfortunately, along my way, along my journey of being diagnosed, I had met a neurologist who made the comment before he sent me to Emory University to get a final diagnosis, Ted, I graduated from Emory. I was a fellow at Emory, and they're involved with a new cutting edge stem cell trial. You may want to look into it. Stem cells have been the talk of hope for 10 plus years, he told me. And of course, even a layperson as myself was familiar with the talk and hope and the, the big P word, potential, of stem cells. So certainly that caught my attention. Along the way, as I started to use a cane full time, could no longer take the stairs at my house, had difficulty in breathing when I would rough house with my children or do other type of exertion exercises, I became more and more concerned about my future and what it held. But when I given the opportunity to get involved in this stem cell trial, Phase one safety trial at Emory, I leaped. I didn't think twice. Again, there was no hope, only potential. Well, this trial sponsored by NeuroSTEM, supported by research at the University of Michigan, including Dr. Feldman, who's the president of the American Neurological Association, and conducted at Emory University, has done more than provide me hope. Over two surgeries, I've received 1.5 million stem cells injected directly into the gray matter of my spinal cord. This had never been done before either. I stress to you now that the results that I received are not anecdotal. They are empirical data. This is not the patient heartwarming, over emotional story. This evidence and you'll see more of it today at noon during the presentation from NeuroSTEM. This evidence was published in peer-reviewed medical journals by both Dr. Ava Feldman and Dr. Jonathan Glass, both world-renowned neurologists. I was able to put my cane down. When I have the need to, I can take the stairs and I can tuck my kids in at night with a little more ease and pick them up and play with them without as much concern about my next breath. All these, while the study is still now just starting phase two, all these were secondary measure endpoints that they had collected and verified. I know I was surprised because I was told it no way would ever help me. There's no way that I could get better from these stem cells because it was safety, phase one, right? That's what they're supposed to say. But I know that just as surprised and just as equally uh, relieved by what they've seen were the doctors. I'll never remember, never forget, excuse me, the first day when my doctor saw me. I had called them a few days earlier. Hey, I'm patient 11. Is anyone else seeing positive results? Well, Ted, it's, it's probably a placebo effect. The more intense the procedure, the more intense the effect. And I said, well, listen, I'm, I'm not crazy here. Uh, I know what I'm feeling. And they said, well, our advice is whatever you're feeling, enjoy it while it lasts. Well, that's two and a half years ago. Still enjoying it while it lasts. 
But the point is, when I went to see them, I think to humor me, they did some tests for secondary measure endpoints that they'd been doing five months prior to my initial surgery. And I don't, my doctor had to sit down. He didn't know what to think. He didn't know what to do. I remember him looking at his nurse director. Do I have to sign this paperwork? <laughs> what do I do with it? Who do we tell? At that time, he said, Ted, you can't tell anyone. <laughs> and I didn't until they released information. Now I've been a tireless advocate for stem cells and for ALS. Recently, I became part of the patient representative program at the FDA. Just a few weeks ago, I was at an FDA meeting. And believe me, I, I say this with no intent to place blame or point fingers. I did learn that there was 25 to 30 new drugs a year approved. That doesn't include the two to 300 generic drugs. That's not new, they're just patent ran out. So 25 to 30 new drugs a year. This could be for acne. It could be for migraines. It could be for cancer. I know it's not for ALS. 25 to 30 new drugs. Listen, I'm not a uh, stem cell scientist, but I don't think that's good enough. But again, I want to stress that it takes a dance partner. The FDA cannot travel this journey alone. They need people in the game with them. And I loved Henry's sense of urgency. As my doctor, Dr. Jonathan Glass, has said numerous times, the house is on fire. It is burning down, and we're watching it. Over 7,000 in this country, there's over 7,000 orphan diseases. Not to insult your intelligence, but in case you're not sure, orphan disease is any disease that impacts 20,000 people or less. There's over 7,000 of those in this country that impact over 3 million people. Not to mention diseases we've all heard of, such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, ALS, MS, of course, spinal cord injury, brain trauma, uh, heart disease, etc. So you take those 7,000, add the thousands more on top of that that you hear of every day, you may have had family impacted by, you yourself may have been impacted by. And then figure out how the best and the brightest we come up with, seven, with 25 to 30 new treatments a year. I don't think that's giving hope. What that indicates to me is the process may be broken. I spent 15 plus years as a managing director at FedEx, and I always look back at the root cause of the problem. And if you weren't producing the outputs you wanted, maybe something's wrong with the inputs. Or maybe in general, the process wasn't set up to win. I think we can do better. I believe we can do better. We need academia, industry, regulators, the entire medical community to come together and find new, innovative ways to keep up with 21st century medicine. We can't approach stem cells the same way we did, you know, as, as we were trying to develop Tylenol or aspirin or anything like that. The pace is much faster, but we haven't changed our approach or our approval. In this hotel today, many of the most brilliant minds in science are represented. My hope, my request, furthermore, my demand as a patient is that while you are here, you collaborate to do better, all of us. We must find a way to fund stem cell research, to get it into human trials. I, I, listen, I know one thing. I may have been called worse. I'm not a rat. So we all know what we see or don't see in rats, in other animals. It, it's all a crapshoot when it comes to putting it in people. We need to safely and morally get it into people. Make, make it available to those suffering and literally dying without hope while potential treatments sit in a lab waiting for funding and seeking ways to overcome the overburdensome regulatory hurdles. 
I am living proof of the power and importance of your research. I have no desire to have the market cornered on stem cell success, believe me. I want this for nothing more than every ALS patient, every spinal cord injury. I read things about heart, the other day I read something about heart regenerative tissue uh, that they were doing. I've read things about creating ears and there's all types of things out there you know better than I. I want to see help for all. Success for every patient. I believe that we need to, through collaboration, competing together, that we can and must safely and morally deliver stem cells where they are needed most to help the unhelpable, cure the uncurable. The road may not be paved yet for stem cell success, but I will say that the dirt bed is there. The asphalt needed to make this a smooth ride will be mixed with legislative action, funding of small and startup bio and pharmaceutical companies, commitment from larger, well-funded organizations and industry leaders, relaxing of regulatory hurdles and partnership with leading academic institutions as well as organizations as the FDA, NIH, and me medical doctors throughout the country. It will not be a one-size-fits-all approach. There is no silver bullet. No one is suggesting stem cells are magic. It will take time and overcoming persistence overcoming these hurdles. But we can't accept status quo anymore. We need you. After this meeting is over, when all is said and done, it's incumbent upon all of us to ensure that not more has been said than done. Action is needed, talk is cheap. And in the end, I believe the results of stem cell trials will speak for themselves. And I leave you with one thought. I believe I speak for all patients when I say this process must be a revolution because people are dying while we wait for what thus far has been a literally painfully slow evolution. Regardless of the disease or your role in the process, it is time to start a stem cell revolution. So let, as we're in Boston, I think it'd be apropos to allow this meeting to be the shot heard around the world. I need you, each of you, to be part of this revolution, a revolution for hope, a revolution for cures, a revolution that I hope includes you. Thank you. I appreciate your time today.